Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on IST QB Advanced Level Test Management Certification. We are in chapter one talking about managing the test activities and continuing ahead with our same segment that has 1.6 test tools. And today we shall be looking into the subsegment of it that is 1.6.3 that is certainly to talk about the selection process considerations and the return on investment evaluation where we would like to discuss quickly that what are the additional considerations we should take into account when selecting a tool at the same time how exactly a manager can look forward to calculate the return on investment when we are investing some money on the tool In our previous tutorials, we have already considered a lot of factors which we should take into account while selecting a tool. Uh, indeed, to talk in terms of selecting, adapting, and rolling it out as well. And we discussed several factors which influences the selection process. But here, we would like to talk more about that what it matters to other people, that is, other stakeholders within the organization, with respect to our tool selection. And being a manager, we must be in collaboration and in line with the other stakeholders' expectation as well, because there might be many other things which the tool might be supplying, which are important for the stakeholders. For example, reports. The KPIs, the different reports, graphs, dashboarding, etc. is not just only for the testing team, but would be required for the stakeholders also to understand that how the testing is progressing. So there are a few things which we would like to talk about and then certainly the return on investment calculation is going to play a vital role. So let's get started with a few considerations in the beginning. That is to certainly talk about that the tools are not something which is certainly a short term thing. It is generally invested uh, for a long term kind of utilization within the organization, perhaps extending over many iterations of a single project or even applicable to many projects. A perspective tool, therefore, be considered from a different viewpoints. Now, to the point, we are just referring to different stakeholders. For example, for a senior management, a positive ROI is required. For the support and operation team, a limited but necessary number of tools used across the organization is preferred. Maintaining a large number of tools, keeping uh, track of their licenses and managing the tool stack should not be cost uh, effective, uh, sorry, costly or time consuming. I think this makes a very pretty sense, so it does not require any kind of explanation. However, just one liner to talk about for the senior management, it matters to them that when somebody is investing some kind of amount into the selection of tools or using a tool within the organization, uh, the management is only worried about what kind of benefits we are going to have. So they are only interested in a cost benefit ratio, which is positive. At the same time, when it comes to the system team or the support team, they are mainly interested in having limited tools within the organization because having many tools being used within the organization creates an overhead for them. They will have to manage the tool, maintain the tool, and at the same time, licenses and usages. There are a lot of things which becomes hectic to handle over a period of time. So we have to consider whether a new tool is allowed within the organization to proceed. The point number three here, for the project leads, the tool must be measurable. Uh, value to the project or organization. It should reflect that the tool is adding value to the organization when it comes to the project lead. And for the people who use the tool, usability is very important. Usability includes uh, support for given tasks, learnability and operability. And for the people, certainly we try to make sure that the tool which we are selecting is easy for them to go ahead and make use of it because if it is complicated to get started, we are going to waste a lot of time learning, training, mentoring, etc. So we would like to have that flavor of the tool which fits the type of organization or type of people we have so that it can be easy for them to learn and start operating the system. And finally, to add here for the operational staff members, maintainability is important because they will be responsible for maintaining the tool from time to time with respect to updates, upgrades, which are supplied by the vendor or even internally, we will have updates and upgrades. So it's not that only the vendors supply that, right? Also to add here, of course, features must be analyzed. Uh, features must be analyzed for each business and technical type of tool. Different perspectives and interest have an influence on the analysis, like test management, test analysis, test automation, or development. The person in the organization that is responsible for the tool must make sure the analysis is accomplished and the above mentioned bullet points are all considered into the account. 
So it is very important for us to understand that the tool may have different utilizations and perspective to be used within the project or the organization. And certainly the person who is owning the tool more of like an administrator should be very much careful about these considerations are taken into account and the tool is fulfilling all the purposes which we have discussed already. So further to add here, we are talking about the next one, which is ROI to understand what is return on investment. We have to understand what kind of costs are involved in that. So let's move on to that. The next thing we are talking about is certainly the ROI evaluation and says all the tools which are introduced into the test process should also ensure a positive ROI. In fact, that's the first point what the management is interested in. In the response, in this response, it is the responsibility of the test manager to take care of the calculation and further evaluation of ROI. In agile software development, it may be the responsibility of the entire development team. Two important points to remember from here. Number one, that a test manager is someone who's responsible to do this ROI calculation and they should basically be doing from the perspective of making sure there's a positive cost benefit ratio. Now, let me just a little bit deep dive into this. Like if you understand, that's good. If not, this is for people who are new to it. ROI, return on investment, is more of like, what are you investing today? And what is that in the return we are expecting from this investment? So it's very simple that you say, for example, you're investing 100,000 today, then we are expecting something more than 100,000 as return on it, which is in terms of reducing our effort, increasing productivity or minimizing your work, etc. So indeed, uh, this is more important. We just wanted to let you know that if you are working in sequential development model, it's test manager who will be taking care of it. But if it in agile, it might be again, the word maybe clearly says that it may be the responsibility of the team, but the team is not someone who is responsible in your organization for calculating the ROI. You may have a test manager external to the team who will be responsible to handle that, right? Also to add here, a cost benefit analysis should be performed before acquiring or building a tool to ensure its benefits to the organization. This analysis should also take both recurring and non-recurring cost into account. So this ROI calculation is not after selecting a tool, which is very important to be understood here. This is before selecting the tool. It's more of like when you are investing into a property, you are calculating that what kind of returns you're going to get from that investment prior to buying it, not after buying the property and then calculating, oh, I'm under loss, but you've already invested, that's gone. So that is where we have to consider the tool into the same way that before investing, we should calculate the uh, cost benefit ratio. And if we have a positive ROI, then we'll go for it. But to do that calculation, we consider the recurring and non-recurring cost, where recurring is more which repeats and non-recurring are more of like one-time investment. So the list of non-recurring costs has been listed here. They are pretty straightforward and self-explanatory, like defining and determining the tool requirements to meet the objectives, uh, which is to define that what exactly we need uh, as a set of requirement to be catered by the tool. The second important thing is evaluating and selecting the correct tool and vendor proof of concept. These are all something which we do only once. So no matter like, you know, evaluating a vendor, conducting a POC, we will be just investing this once for all and then we will be using the tool. So these are one time cost. Same way purchasing, adapting or developing the tool for initial usage, design, defining guidelines for the usage of the tool, initial training for the tool. Now initial is a keyword which you should remember from here that initial training is non recurring cost but as you may require top up trainings or new employees are joining so you may do another training for them. So it's not that like training can be just one type of cost. Training can be non-recurring as well as recurring, both. Okay, because training will be always there for people who are joining new to the team. So it's not necessary that the team whom you train will remain with you forever. Over a period of time, you'll have new recruits and that's where you wouldn't have to do the training once again. So there'll be costs involved. So some of the element here would be a part of recurring as well. The third next thing is integrating the tool into the existing tool landscape. That is blending it with the other tools with the organization is using that effort what you put is again a one-time cost because integration happens once forever right and finally procuring hardware and software needed to support the tool which is setting up the required infrastructure and environment would all be a part of the first uh, slot so like one time but at the same time there are many recurring costs so let's also quickly check out that 
When it comes to the recurring cost here, of course, we include recurring licenses and support fees, the maintenance cost, ongoing training cost, and porting the tool to different environment. See, licenses and support will always be there because it would be uh, continuously like how the people are using it and so many other things and all. Uh, at the same time, uh, we would talk about the maintenance cost here, which is uh, certainly the cost which will be responsible for updates and upgrades. And ongoing training, as I just mentioned already, that it would be in both the elements. And porting is not something which is mandatory, but maybe over a period of time, as your base operating systems are upgrading, then you might have to switch to another operating system. And that would be, again, one of the costs which always keeps happening. For example, moving from Windows 7 to Windows 8, Windows 8 to 10, and sort of thing, right? So finally, to add here, of course, opportunity cost must also be considered. This basically means that the time spent on evaluating, administrating, training, and using the tool could have been, could have invested, uh, being, uh, instead being spent on actual testing task. Therefore, more test resources may be needed before the tool can be used for intended activities. Now here, we just want to let you know that opportunity cost is more of like, like if in case you say, for example, you're using open source tool and you realize that the team has to invest 40 hours of work to build a script, but in that 40 hours, they could have tested that module themselves, right? Or maybe another 10 hours, 50 hours, you could have done it yourself. So why would you go for a tool, which is something new for the people and that takes almost like as good as the manual effort? And it's not that if you have got the tool, then there's nothing to be done. Still, you need to prepare the data. You still need to prepare the scripts. You need to juggle with those codes and then make sure that this code works precisely on the system. Play around with your locators and identification of the object. And on top of it, you'll have to collaborate with developers to make sure that the exact UI is visible to us so that we can run the automation test. And there are many challenges. If you are an automation tester, you understand that, right? So being a test manager, we should consider these kind of calculations so that we can be more effective in implementing the tools. Finally, to add here, of course, uh, we are talking about a few other factors. That is, what kind of risk uh, regarding the ROI should be considered when selecting the tool, like immaturity of the organization can lead to inefficient use of the tool. Changes in the maintenance policy of the vendor can increase the workload. Let's, let's talk about this when you talk about the maturity of the team. Remember the very first point we discussed in first segment of this chapter, that is, uh, the test tools requires you to consider the maturity of the process and the organization. This basically plays a role in terms of like if you are a startup organization, you have nothing stabilized, nothing settled down. So you don't have a process altogether. And if you bring in a tool at that point of time, it would be very difficult for people to get adapted to it. They would see it as an overhead. But over a period of time when you find challenges and that's where you give the solution, people understand that, yeah, this is the time where we need it to reduce our effort. So first thing is to get aligned to a process before you start using a tool. Be it about test management, be it about test automation, anything, right? Having stabilized organization, people who are ready to use, they know what is it and how it will add value would be a great insight. Also to add here, of course, the changes in the maintenance policy from the vendor. So vendor, if keep changing something or the other every time, then people have to keep changing and adapt to that. Higher cost than expected, lower benefit than expected could be a surprise because we do understand we conducted a POC, we did and did a pilot project, but it might be possible that the tool is little expensive than we expected or same way, the benefits are limited than that what we thought of. So that's where a test manager should consider these risks into account and be ready for mitigating them with well-defined action items. Also to add here, the following benefits, which we have already discussed in the foundation, may also apply to the test tool, like reduction in rap repeated manual work, speed up of the test cycle time, saving the test execution cost by decrease in manual activities, increased coverage uh, for certain types of uh, test types supported by the tool, reduction in human error due to the fewer manual activities, and quicker access to information about the test. So they just blended everything together, like automation can help you reduce your manual repetitive work, uh, test management tools can give you quicker information access, and certainly can reduce human errors, because human errors are always there, human is error prone. So while typo typing things, uh, we can have typographical error, but tools are considered to be more accurate than human in that sense. That means if you ask them to compare expected and actual, 
it's said that the machine would do better comparison than that of human. Okay, because of course we may go wrong, but the machine will not, right? It will follow as instructed. So indeed, uh, that's pretty much what we wanted to talk about from the tool section of this particular category. And I hope we have got the clarity for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank <laughs> you.